is Amanda Orson. I'm here to talk about how to scale campaigns. Um, and this is pretty universal. I'm gonna try and make it accessible to both people who are in CPA and CPS marketing. So just to sort of break down what, that, what I mean by those acronyms, CPA marketing or cost per action would be uh, networks like Ads for Doe or above all offers, things that pay you for a lead cost per sale or CPS marketing, uh, when I talk about that, is gonna be things that will pay you for a product or pay you a commission for having sold a product. So things like share a sale or commission junction. So CPA and CPS are out of the way. Uh, first thing, what is scale? Uh, before we get into how to scale. Scale is just a progressive advance in size. So when we're talking about how to scale, all we're talking about is growing a progressive trend northward. First, let's talk about proof of concept. Net profit equals units sold times unit profit. That sounds really convoluted. Um, basically what it means is that if your unit sold has a ceiling, then you're gonna handcuff your ability to actually create leverage and to scale. So breaking this down into marketing terms, if we pick something that is really niche, like you know, pet bandanas as our product that we're gonna market, you're just not gonna be able to reach critical mass and you're probably never going to be able to scale that to a very large, meaningful income. This looks a little bit more like something we're used to. Net profit equals conversions, which in our case is our unit sold, times commission, which is our unit profit. So all we're talking about is just, if you wanna actually scale something, you need something that's actually going to reach a lot of people. So before you actually begin your campaign, try and, try and grab something that is going to be able to reach as many people as you possibly can. Now I know a lot of people are gonna say, don't enter a saturated niche. It's much more difficult, but you know, it's more difficult because that is where the money is, period. Um, a good rule of thumb, if your campaign can not potentially sell, help, serve, or impact millions, it's never going to make millions. All right. This presentation is gonna assume that you're trying to build a business or that you have a business. And the big difference between a business and a job, trading your hours for dollars, that's not a business. It's never gonna be a business. So if you're just looking at this as something that you're gonna do at home and you don't have plans for it to go bigger than that, then it's probably not going to reach the scale that we're talking about. You gotta be thinking bigger than that from inception. We're gonna talk a little about John D. Rockefeller throughout this. Uh, the commensurate capitalist. This is one of his more famous quotes where he says, I would rather earn 1% of 100 people's efforts than 100% of my own. Now that sounds kind of schmarmy, but the guy knew a thing or two with Standard Oil, right? Basically, he's saying that your ability to scale on your own is always going to be limited. So in order to begin with scale in mind, you have to begin by thinking about building a business, a real and tangible asset that is going to continue to produce income regardless of whether or not you are actively working on it at that very moment. All right, so we're gonna talk about two different kinds of scale. Housing, or in this case, the housing slide, is gonna talk about horizontal scale. Basically, we can define horizontal scale with the concept of more. So in this case, more being these houses. This is a famous place, uh, actually just outside of Philadelphia, called Levittown, where one man built basically tract houses and the house or the actual town was named after him. But horizontal scale is just taking one thing and doing it over and over and over and over again and scaling in that direction. Vertical scale, which we can roughly define by the word more, is just taking one thing and pouring more into it. So before we get into types of horizontal scale, uh, welcome to everyone else that's new. And I apologize, I'm super caffeinated, so if I'm going too fast, just slow me down. Like, just flag me and say, what is that? What are you trying to do? Or, you know, explain something. Horizontal scale. So if we're thinking back to that slide two slides ago, doing things that are more, we're talking about building more websites, going for more networks, working with more traffic sources, doing more offers, products, or niches, working with more ad networks, or more revenue streams. So I'm gonna break down these just for a second. If you wanna work with more networks, or excuse me, if you wanna 
work with more sites. The problem with that is that it becomes very cumbersome and very time intensive. Building a website, as I'm sure most of you know, is laborious either on your end or it's going to cost you some money. Um, if you want to work with more networks, the way to scale horizontally there is to take the same offer over different networks, especially if you're working with a CPA network. Um, this is pretty easily done. For a CPS network, you may not find that the same offer is available on both or one of the three major CPS networks. Um, with traffic, this is really the big point of horizontal scale. Make sure you get really, really good at one kind of traffic before you try and take it into other kinds of traffic sources. So when I'm talking about traffic, I'm talking about SEO, social, paid traffic sources like PPC, Bing, AdWords, uh, media buying and remnant media buying platforms, um, PPV, which is lesser known, but more traffic sources are absolutely a way to scale horizontally pretty quickly. Um, more offers, products, and niches. Again, this is something that'll actually help you scale if you are able to incorporate it, but I would stay within one niche or one vertical so that you're not trying to learn multiple things. And more revenue streams, okay. So one of the big things that I like to talk about is branding. It's much more valuable to, if you're gonna put the same amount of time and effort into something, to do something where you're actually going to be able to brand and have an asset after it. With most of the thin affiliate sites that we've seen, say circa 2008, 9, 10, and the things that, are, that Google is basically not rewarding with rank now, we saw essentially throwaway sites, things that weren't branded, that were never meant to be assets that could be sold after the fact. But if you take the time and you build an asset and you build a brand around your asset and then sell products within it, it gives you uh, the opportunity to create multiple revenue streams. And what I mean by that is that this is Affiliate Summit, right? And we are definitely pursuing commissions, but there are so many more potential revenue streams involved in any given site that you're actually working on. So one of the great ways to scale horizontally is to take that same site that you've spent all this time and effort and energy working on, trying to build traffic to it, trying to get the word out, and then find new ways to make money, not just affiliate commissions, but say selling advertising, trying to do subscription-based things. Or if you have a really good brand, brand, you can start looking at licensing deals, especially if you've secured your intellectual property. And I mean, by intellectual property, your domain and potentially a trademark if you've actually gotten a branded logo or a branded name to go along with that site. and more people. Okay, so the more people is the really big, really hard, really scary part of horizontal scale. Basically, it comes down to two parts. You need more people to do more of the work. This includes employees or virtual assistants. So here we're talking about things like Odesk or Elance or onlinejobs.ph or you know one of a myriad of other sites. I have a bunch of them listed in my resources at the end. This is a really valuable tool once you know how to use it. If you wanna take your site and outsource or begin to start piecing out what it is that you wanna actually outsource, whether it's content or link building or image manipulation or creating infographics, this is a great way to actually get that started. Um, one of the other really, I wouldn't say important, but potentially very beneficial ways to find outsourcers is through Craigslist. It's a very hit or miss thing. It's not going to work out every time, but when it does work out, it works out beautifully. You can find someone who's extremely loyal. It's probably already an English speaker, which is a problem with some of these sites. And um, hopefully someone that will work very hard for you for a long period of time. But again, that's very hit or miss. The other way to use people, well, you have to leverage people to scale. The other way to use people is to create user-generated content. So when you're thinking about scaling horizontally, User-generated content is fantastic because it's content that's being generated regardless of whether or not you're actually working on your site at that very minute. We're talking here about forums, we're talking about reviews. Amazon is a fantastic example of being able to leverage user-generated content for huge e-commerce goals. How many of us have gone to Amazon just to see if a product was reviewed well before we purchased it? Right, exactly. So if you can find a way, it's very time intensive uh, to monitor a forum, but if you can find a way to put that in there, either a forum or reviews are gonna help you generate more product in the form of content very quickly. The last way that you can 
think about using people to scale hor or for horizontal scale is to do your work in the form of spreading the word about what, you, what it is you're doing or what your website is about. This is better probably called virality. This is also maybe called the resources of crowds. Um, a good example of this is spike bait. So spike bait is anything that drives traffic to your site very hard, heavy, and fast, and then is gone. So we're not talking about a long SEO campaign or a long link building campaign or something that is going to drive traffic for a long time, but I'm talking about something that would have gone maybe five years ago to the top of Dig or something right now that would go to the top of the Reddit or subreddit forum, uh, sub forum. This is really a valuable asset if you have it. It's important to note why people share. Um, the keys are that it makes people look smart, it makes people look funny, or it makes people look cool. If you can provide content on your website that will make people look smart, funny, or cool, they're gonna share it. They may even share it without reading it, which is a new phenomenon I've just discovered. Um, but it comes down to identity, really. If people can identify with the stuff that you're providing on your site in a meaningful way, they're gonna share it with your friends and they're gonna end up helping you horizontally scale simply because they're gonna spread it around without having you do any of that work. So now we're gonna talk about vertical types of scale. Bigger traffic. This is why it's so important to get good at one kind of traffic first so that you can have the ability to scale vertically and put more money back into your campaigns. Now what I mean by that is that if you, uh, say for example, you have started with Facebook ads or social advertisement. If you've gotten really, really good at knowing how to generate traffic through that traffic source, you can take the money out of that through the profits to start testing and learning new forms of traffic but if you only put, say, a couple hundred dollars into learning how to do PPC and maybe a couple hundred dollars into learning how to do Facebook and then maybe a couple hundred dollars into doing your first remnant media buy, you're going to end up spending a lot of money and getting very little learnings out of it. If you want to scale vertically, get really, really good at one thing and then move on and learn how to do something else. This also helps you do bigger ad spend. So one of the more interesting things that I learned when I was first starting out as an affiliate um, I think Smaxer or Jason Akatif, the CEO of Ads for Doe, was talking about how he would test a campaign and he would say that he would rather spend $20,000 putting money in front of MSNBC and then rotating through offers to figure out which one is going to convert than to go piecemeal because eventually he knows that he's got that hose of traffic that is always going to be there. And once he's got an offer that's going to convert, he can potentially get great magnitudes of scale out of it. bigger ROI. So a lot of people, I think especially a lot of new people, don't recognize that you can get much more ROI out of every individual campaign than they actually get just by taking the straight up commission from whatever your ad network or whatever your affiliate network is. One of the ways that you can do it is to ask for a commission pay bump. You may see this more often in CPA networks than you will in CPS networks but it is out there. I would absolutely talk to your affiliate manager and if you have an individual affiliate manager with the network, or excuse me, with the uh, program you're working in within a network, if you're doing really well for them, ask for a pay bump, you might get it. Another one, uh, another way of actually generating more return on your initial investment is to streamline your operations or create efficiencies. If you find that you can take one kind of campaign and port it over to other traffic sources or if you can take one kind of uh, creative that you've generated for one display campaign and also use that on, say, AdWords display campaigns, that's creating efficiency. It's not generating more work and you're going to end up getting more, buck or more bang for your buck out of it. The next way is to reduce your expenses. Reducing your expenses and increasing profitability kind of goes hand in hand with what we were just talking about. Um, but we can also think about it in ways like prepaying for your media buy that you're gonna do months and months and months in advance. That's a really common way to get big percentages off of your media buy campaigns if you're doing media buys. And vertical scale, changing your geographic coverage. So we're in the United States and a lot of the CPS networks are based in the United States, but the world is sort of opening up to affiliate marketers. If you have an opportunity to learn one niche or one industry, and you think that you've got that industry pegged in the United States, 
by all means, go and try and find the same or similar offers if they're available in Canada or South America or Europe, et cetera, because you end up being able to scale without having to learn something new. It already has proof of concept in there, and you've probably already got creatives that you can just have translated into new languages. So the most important question really to ask yourself is what you can do today to build systems that'll allow this business to operate independent of my time. If it's not operating independent of your time, ultimately you're not gonna have a business, you're gonna build yourself another job. So if we take that concept of vertical scaling and horizontal scaling, ultimately we get progress. More plus bigger equals scaling. The same offer, more countries, same offer, more languages. Take the same offer and build it out into new verticals, you get scale. If you pump more money into your existing campaigns, you get scale. Ideally, or not ideally, if you aren't also moving horizontally and vertically at the same time, you're not gonna get that progress. You'll get a spike or you'll you know, maximize your traffic source or you'll maximize your ad spend or you're just gonna run out of, a, of options with your campaign because it will ultimately die. This is how you actually build it to be bigger than just yourself sitting at home at your desk. So before I actually close this, just a basic couple of endpoints. What's gonna be really valuable to you as you're building your business is to start creating a rubric. So for every action that you have, think about what steps you took to actually perform or complete a task. If you're building a website, break it down into manageable steps. And then for every one of those steps, create a rubric. So a rubric is just a set of standards. Once you have sort of a pattern of standards that you're gonna go through to create a website or to create a campaign, whether it's a display campaign or creating an infographic or to create content, once you've got that set of standards, then you can start building it or breaking it down into manageable tasks. And from that set of manageable tasks, you can start seeing opportunities to outsource it. Test that rubric over time. See if there are ways that you can find um, opportunities to do something cheaper or do it faster or to do it with someone else's efforts and then hire outsource people to complete those tasks within your rubric. Eventually, what you wanna do is to be able to get a manager to actually manage what you've got going on inside that rubric and you, your job as an entrepreneur is to provide a vision and direction to the managers within that system managing those rubrics. Does that make sense? Okay. So that's the ultimate goal. Before, when we were talking about horizontal scaling, we were talking about building lots of little houses all over the place. Vertical scaling, we're talking about building a skyscraper, something that just shoots straight up or down with your traffic source, with spending more money. What you ultimately want is what Rockefeller had. This is a very famous image. It's called Rockefeller's View. It's actually taken from the top of, I think, 30 Rock. What you want is a city full of skyscrapers. That is horizontal and vertical scaling in action. And that's it. On this link, I actually have uh, a number of resources for finding outsourcers, finding traffic, different networks. I'll probably put more links up later on tonight when I get home as I'm thinking about it because I'm still too caffeinated. And uh, that's all. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Yes. Okay, so when we're talking, uh, the question is basically when we're talking about expanding scale into other countries, or when we're talking about expanding a campaign into other countries. Um, you're a WordPress developer, that's correct. So in this case, what we'd be talking about is once you've got, once you've figured out how to market your services to US customers, to take that and take that same campaign and find a way to market it to other customers in other countries. So WordPress is a pretty, pretty ubiquitous platform at this point. I'm sure that you can find customers that would want to hear from you in South America and Europe. Sure. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there you're getting efficiency. You're getting scale of your time. You're figuring out how to market your services once, and then you're just moving it into another country and who happens to speak another language. In fact, one of the resources that I've listed on that link is uh, Online Translators Cafe or something like that, um, where you can find someone that will translate your site for fairly little money. So it's definitely worth it. Yeah, absolutely. Matt. So Matt was saying that if you have the ability to market your services and social as part of your program to make sure that you have two versions of your Twitter account, for example, one in Spanish and one in English. And the nice thing about that is that tweets, very small little bits of information, you can probably translate very rapidly through Google Translate. It may not always be perfect, but I think you'll probably get it 80, 90% of the time. And the rest of the time they'll laugh at you. Are there any other questions? Is there something that I can help you guys with? Sure, yeah, I didn't introduce myself. So um, I originally started out as an affiliate. I actually broke in with local lead generation. So I would uh, develop websites within cities and a niche. And then what I did to scale that was I ported that same idea into other cities. So that was a fairly easy way to scale without having to do too much more work because once you figure out how to market to say plumbers in Pittsburgh, then you can figure out how to market to plumbers in Miami and plumbers in Stroudsburg and wherever else. Um, now I'm actually working on large branded sites, trying to build them into becoming very large assets. And that also involves scale on a different level. Um, instead of porting into different cities or thinking about things in a horizontal way, I'm thinking about things vertically. Like how can I get more people engaged more often? How do I create more spike bait to get things more viral? How do I hire writers to get more content out there faster? Things like that. All right, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for your time. I apologize for going really fast. Like I said, I'm super caffeinated. And if you have any questions, I'm up here.